Okay, so it's already two o'clock. We can get started here in a minute. I think, and then whoever joins in, we'll let them join in. And this, I'm going to be recording this video as well. I uh, just want to let everybody know, uh, and it will be available. I'll try to upload it on YouTube later today, and then uh, I'll post a link as well in the feed, the Twitter feed. Okay. So. Okay. Well, people are still coming in. Let's just give them one more minute and then we'll get started. Uh, see a chat way to do it. Okay. All right. So thank you everyone. Uh, I know it's Sundays are a busy day for everybody. Uh, People have things to do, but uh, just want to do a quick 30 minute session on scalping. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking questions and then, you know, since primarily we're day traders, so we're looking for those kind of opportunities. So I just want to do a session on scalping. Okay. So just a quick intro. Uh, Annie is not here <laughs> with me today. Uh, I told her to take the kids out as otherwise it would have been hard for us to uh, focus on this presentation with all the noise in the background. And I wanted to record it as well. So I just want to make sure that we get a good audio quality. Uh, so yeah, we've been trading for the past 15 years. Any uh, got involved in trading in the past five to six years. And primarily, yes, we are day traders, uh, trade box and options. Uh, I love to do, personally, uh, I like scalping. I know Annie does not. She's more into swings and option trades. Uh, everybody has their own thing. So, but today's uh, video, today's uh, this 30 minute session will be all on uh, scalping, right? And how we do it, how we can utilize uh, the key price levels to trade like that. But I will kind of touch base on a few other things as well, which I think are important. So first of all, you can go and write, uh, read all about scalping on Google. I'm not going to get into the details of what that is. There's plenty of good stuff online on YouTube or Google. Uh, you can go read what scalping is, how people do it and everything. But in short, these are quick trades, right? With larger position size that you're trying to capture uh, small movements in the stocks. Okay, and why do I scalp? You have to know that as well. So from personality perspective, it is very important that you find out what your niche is and you match that up with your daily routine, right? So for example, uh, I am a little impatient when it comes to trading, right? I would like to get into a trade at the right level and then get out in the first, you know, getting in for in, in a minute, two minutes, three minutes. That's all, those are my scalp trades. Otherwise I'd become impatient. So it has to match how you want to trade and then daily routine. Uh, you know, what we have small kids, we like to go and spend time with them as well. And now they're also homeschooling. So I don't want to sit in front of the computer all day long if I don't have to, right? I want to just get in at the right time, look at, do all the homework beforehand and then make sure when the time comes, I have all my ducks in order and I can execute the trade at that very time, right? So you have to match your trading style with your personality, with your daily routine, and then find your niche, right? Otherwise, uh, you it's, it's, it's a journey for everybody. It took me a few years to find out uh, that I uh, primarily like to scalp. I'm a technical trader. We like to uh, uh, get in and get out of the trade quickly. So find that reason, what that, you know, that will, that will motivate you. Uh, it will better fit your trading strategy that matches your personality. Otherwise it will be a struggle. So develop that skill. Okay. You have to do that. It's very important. Methodology. What is my methodology when it comes to scalp? I think I can divide that into two aspects, right? The technical aspect and the emotional aspect. Now we'll talk about the technical aspect because that is something you can define with numbers, right? With levels, you can visualize that, the technical aspect of, of, uh, of this methodology or the trading or the framework, whatever you want to call it. And then there's an emotional side to it, right? What is emotional side? It is very important because having control on the emotion side of your trades is something that will keep you in the game for long. You know, that will keep 
you keep uh, uh, that will let you keep your gains and your profits. Otherwise, what will happen is three, four days, you'll have nice scalping profits. And the fourth day, that scalp trade that you did not take a stop loss on, it will end up turning into a swing trade and it will eat up all your four or five days worth of hard work and profits. So you have to be disciplined. You have to be patient uh, and only get in at the right time, right? So though that's the emotional side of it. Personally, I still sometimes struggle with it. Uh, everybody think does in some form or in some capacity. And if I think about it, the biggest thing that was a hurdle for me when it comes to scalping was overcoming the fear, okay? Was trusting myself uh, that I can do it, that yes, my level will work, right? That I have done the homework, yes, this will work for me. So that fear, that, that, that trust factor had to be there. I struggled with it, I'll be honest with you. It took me some time. And there are ways to uh, develop some, uh, you know, some practice that emotions, you know, you can do it on paper trades, uh, paper trading account, virtual account, so that you can see your results and then kind of slowly move into uh, the real account, do it with small position size, see how it works, and then gradually increase your size because that will develop your emotions. You will have more confidence on yourself. You will trust yourself better, okay? So that is very important. Uh, technical sides is definitely something about patterns, about key levels, support and resistance, and all that stuff. So you have to know that as well. Uh, and before we get into the methodology from the technical side, uh, I just wanted to quickly tell you guys that the way I define my trades, my scalping trades, is in three categories, three broader categories. Breakout trade, right, which is if the stock is getting out of a certain range, uh, going up, it's a long, otherwise it's a short breakup, right? If it goes below a certain support level and it's breakdowns on the uh, uh, downside. So that's a breakout trade on the short side. And then there's a bounce trade, which is basically you are trying to play a bounce from a certain support level. And, and then there's a certain, uh, God, one second, I think somebody's trying to get in. I just want to make sure that I get them in. Okay, admit all. Uh, and then there are de uh, rejection trades. Right, rejection trade is basically you're trying to look for uh, uh, trades where the uh, resistance is stronger and the stock is having a hard time getting above that level. So you look for some sort of rejection, and you can look in. I can share the details. I have this uh, this link which I have made for anyone who joins our platform, gives them a quick overview of what these things mean. Uh, give them a little overview of, uh, the, you know, in, in terms of examples as well, how does a level rejection looks like, what a breakout means, what it can look like. So if you need that, I will share that with you after uh, the meeting. But, but you know, that's something that you can look it up uh, in details uh, later on. Okay, so no need to get into that, what those are, but that's what I kind of classify my trades in. Okay, let's move forward. So this is what a five-minute chart of Amazon looked like uh, without key levels, right? This is a chart from Friday, from this last Friday, uh, August 27th, I think, right? So this is a five-minute chart of uh, Amazon. This is what it looks like in uh, the form of uh, a five-minute chart, right? Okay. Now, if I move that... Uh, if I put the key levels on this chart, right? Let me do that. Uh, okay. So these were the key levels provided on 27th of August on Amazon. So if I put these key levels on the chart, this is what it looks like, right? Uh, these lines, the blue lines, white lines, these are all the levels. So it becomes easy for you to visualize where I should time my entry, right? And I'll get into the details in terms of what the rules are to uh, when you when you have to execute. But basically, I'm only looking to trade on the uh, uh, this this uh, key level, right? Where my laser pointer is right now. I'm only looking to trade entry rejection or buying rejection or buying or bounce, whatever you want to play. I'm only going to enter at the key level, nothing in between. Because with scalping, you are, you're, you're being patient. So your entry is 
going to be as precise as you like it to be, right? As you're, so if it's a precise entry, you have to go in with a plan and the plan should, ex, should, should include a stop loss and the plan should include the exit price, right? You already know how much you stand to lose if it goes against you. So there should be no fear factor, right? And you are already making uh, a good decision in terms of timing your entry the best way you can right based on a key price level so that is very important that you wait for the right entry you only get in at the right time and then you use the right tool set to execute your entry which i will show you here in a few minutes as well okay so this is what it looks like now let's see when i made that trade on friday let me zoom in a little bit it will kind of okay so the stock opened amazon stock right so this is a five minute bar the five minute bar open right here, it sliced through this first initial support and then it went all the way down, right? Now, why did I not buy the stock here for a scalp trade, right? If I was looking for a bounce, now I'll get to that in a minute, but for right now, just focus on that. I bought the stock right here at 33.19, right? That was one of the key level, 33.19.2. So my execution was 313.19.9. And then I got out at 33.25. With 100 shares right so that is a scalp trade right and let me show you what it looks like in a two and a one minute chart right so this is a one minute chart of the same uh uh, uh amazon stock right so i entered here 3319 at the uh key level and in the next minute or so uh, i got out at 3325 i'm not looking to hold this for a longer time, right? I want to get out in the two to three, four minute time frame because if it's not going to work, it's not going to work and it will tell me immediately. So I want to get out. I'm not going to make it a swing trade and wait for it to go at 33.50 or 49. Uh, you know, that's a whole different story. But scalp trades are meant to be quick, right? In and out at key price level, you get in and you get out. All right. So that's what it leads to B. So what is a key price level and how do you find it, right? What the hell is that? So a price level, a key price level can be defined by where the probability for a stock to bounce, get rejected or break out from is very high, right? So you have to, you're going to time your entry at a place where that probability for a stock to move in either of these three directions or two directions is high. Right. And how do you come up with those levels? Well, I personally do a multi time frame analysis, right, uh, which basically means I go through uh, different time periods, sometimes starting from monthly, weekly, all the way down to a five minute time period. Right. So you look at these different levels and different time frames and see what's going on, where the support and resistance levels are. And then you create some trend lines. You look for channels, you know, what kind of a channel the price is moving in. Right. And then you do a candlestick, a thorough candlestick analysis and the idea is that the 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 analysis that you do with these tools these price action tools you have it should be consistent right the framework the methodology should be consistent it cannot be that you're looking at chart a or amazon chart in a different way and when you're analyzing a tesla chart you're using different methodology and like you know you're like okay this level is i, I, I like this level because this has uh, I don't know, you know, different touch points, something like that. So you have to have some uh, uh, sort of methodology where every chart you analyze is in the same fashion, right? Uh, only then you will have consistency in your methodology and it you will be able to tweak as well, right? That, hey, this thing is not working because I'm doing it in a certain way. So you have to know those little things, that little methodology that you a practice like you know hey candlestick analysis what does that mean that means are the candles more uh, trend bar types are they more dojis right if there are more bottom wicks versus versus was top wicks you know channels is the price bouncing from channels uh consistently is the chat does the channel also meet uh, uh, a candlestick uh, uh, uh you know congestion zone something like that so you have to have those things working for you you have to have that consistent methodology to come up with the key price level only then you will have these high probability areas where the price is likely to bounce from or get rejected from right 
So those that thing is very, very important when you uh, uh, come up with these price levels. Okay, let's move on. Uh, some personal rules that I have. I always like to start, uh, you know, a little after 15 minutes if I'm looking to scalp because of the morning volatility, unless of course it goes to a level, for example, the one I showed you, right? This Amazon level, this was one, two, three, four, five, about fifth or sixth minute execution, right? And I did that because this was number one, a key level, 33.19. And this was almost the gap fill, right? So this opened up with a gap up and when the price went down, it almost filled the gap. So this was a good, high quality, high probability trade that, that I wanted to take uh, and it worked out nicely. So you kind of combine few things when you're looking at these levels, okay? So, but generally speaking for scalping, you have to have a mindset that I don't care if market is breaking out, if Tesla goes above 717, yes, sure. That's not my strategy. That's not my thing. Uh, I'm only going to get into a uh, scalp trade once I have, once I know what the day looks like, you know, what, once I know what the chart is doing in the day, if it's running, if it's range bound, then you kind of, you know, uh, adjust your uh, uh, approach accordingly. So that's why I try to start after a few minutes and make sure that you have some understanding of the market. Okay. And enter only at key price level. That is something I struggled with initially. I was kind of chasing sometimes, uh, but then I realized I don't need to do all that. I can I can just focus on key price level that will keep my emotions in check and that will keep my win ratio high because I'm only targeting a dollar, two dollar, sometimes 50 cents move from a particular level. I don't need to catch a breakout trade. So that is not my thing. So that helped me a lot, right? And bring only at key price levels. Then no order without a stop loss, okay? Stop loss has to be there. That entry with 500 shares or 1,000 shares cannot turn into a, a swing trade overnight, right? Uh, so you have to honor your stop loss, whatever that may be. Or, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, for example, in Amazon, I like to keep a $5 stop loss or a $10 stop loss with 100 shares, right? So that means my stop, my loss is contained to 500 or $1,000. I already know what I stand to lose if the trade does not go against me because that's the biggest fear, right? People sometimes like, oh, I don't know how much I lose. But when you know how much you lose, if this trade is not going uh, 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 the way you wanted it to, uh, you already know where to get out, right? Uh, so do not chase, look for pullbacks. People get stuck scalping if they are chasing something that is running because you end up buying something at a market order or something that broke out. I personally, uh, let me show you actually, I uh, think I might have that, I'll just have to open that. Uh, I like to, uh, one second, I need to open this. So I like to uh, keep a tra uh, track of my scalp trades. I don't keep track of uh, option trades. I know even any does not because there's just so many. But I, I started doing this for my own benefit because I wanted to see what sort of trades are working for me, right? So I keep a track of every scalp trade I do. Uh, let me drop a pivot table on it and I'll show you something interesting. So if I sort it with a trade type and let's say PL on a trade, uh, how's that? How's that do right there? Okay. So let me the size. So if I sort it, uh, sort it, sort it, or these sorted. Okay. So okay, I need to sort largest. I don't know why it's not sorting like that, but oh, it did. Okay, <laughs> sorry, uh, there you go. So, so you can see most of my profits and scalps are coming from level bounce, right? And then level rejection. Breakout trades in scalping, I, you know, the profits are only $12,000. So that's the lowest, uh, you can say the, the, the smallest profit uh, category for me when it comes to scalping. The biggest is bounce and rejection, right? And that is what I, kind of analyze my trades that I am good at bounce trades. So that's why I always encourage you to keep tab of your trades in some form or the other, uh, assign them some, some sort of a, a, you know, a tag or some fields that you can uh, track these things like, okay. So for me, bounce trades are my biggest, uh, 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 you know, uh, strong area. So I like to 
play bounces a whole lot, then I want to do a breakout. I don't care about breakouts that much when it comes to scalping, right? I want something that I have a high confidence on. So I have high confidence on bounce trades or rejection trades because those work for me. Breakouts can be fake. So that's why I like this uh, bounce trade strategy, okay? So no chasing. And also focus on few tickers, right? If you focus on few tickers like Amazon, Tesla, Shop, these are liquid tickers or any stock that is running for that day and you have price levels on it, right? So that makes things in control. You will know the price levels much better. You will be able to execute much better with much more confidence. Otherwise, uh, if you are looking at, to um, scalp some new name where you don't have the levels on, it, it just brings more anxiety, right? Which is not always good, okay? Uh, Quickly, how do you place an order? Okay, placing an order, it makes a big difference, right? You don't want to leave an opening order. And I'll show you here in a second. Uh, no market orders, right? And if you're scalping uh, 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 options, right, based on these key price levels, uh, I would say if, if, if you can, try to stick with at the money or at least slightly in the money options so that there's a higher... So the delta is higher so that when the bounce occurs, the delta helps your option price move, right? Otherwise, if you go into something that is out of the money or far out of the money, right? Uh, and the bounce is, let's say $3 only, your option does not move that much. Yes, that means in the money or at the money will be higher priced, but it will move as well, right? So, and that is what you want. You, you know, you're only going for smaller moves. So you want to get maximized uh, that move for your option, okay? Keep it simple. I, I personally don't use any indicators whatsoever. I find them lagging, but if you use some indicators for your uh, analysis or your trading, and if you want to overlay them on, on price action on key levels, sure, by all means do that, but then figure out how it is, how it's working out for you. Because I personally think for scalping, all you need is price right? You don't really need an RSI or MSCD because by the time that will give you a signal of sort of some sort of confirmation, it would already be too late and you'll be kind of like chasing from. Um, and, and, and frankly speaking, when the things are falling down towards the bounce level, RSI is not going to be in the positive territory. CD will not be showing you any crossover at that time, <laughs> right? So, and you need some sort of a nice advanced plot platform. So let me go and show you let's get into uh think or swim platform right so let me go to amazon that's the one that we were looking at earlier so these levels for right now are already good for next week for monday for tomorrow right so already adjusted them so that's why you might not so the levels have slightly changed from what they were on friday because i update them every day uh so yeah so let me actually show you so I mean, if I go to the daily time frame, let's bring all the trades. Uh, so these are all my Amazon trades. Uh, oops, uh, four hour the chart, right? I scalp a lot. For example, look at Tesla. I scalp a lot, right? Based on key levels. My fear was not trusting myself, right? And once I started doing that, once I started, it's only on uh, these levels things started working out for me. And okay, now I want to show you how to place an order in Thinkorswim or if any other platform you have. So for example, Amazon, right? Let me get rid of this. So now if Amazon, let's say on Monday opens up somewhere below 33.52, below this key price level right here, I would like to uh, place a bracket order, right? So I always do a bracket order. I have these templates saved for myself, right? Different templates for different stocks, for different points and, you know, stop loss levels and all that stuff. So 10 points, what I'll do is 33, 43.5, right? Again, I'm just giving you an example. I might do it at 33, 37, depending on how price is, but I'll just tell you how it looks like, right? So this is what the bracket order will look like. What this means is if the price falls down to 33, 43.5, it will, buy 100 shares off Amazon, right? And then if I see, okay, uh, hey, this thing is still going down, but I'm getting four or $5 worth of profit, I can always adjust my take 
profit price. And similarly, I can always adjust my stock price, my, my stock price as well, right? And if I see, okay, Amazon is opening up on Monday morning at 33.45, which is very close to this key price level and it can slice because of the volatility in the morning, I will not place my order here. I will de uh, lower my price to the uh, support level below that, right? And use my stop loss order as well. And these are floating orders, right? I can always have these order sitting right here, right? I will just have this sitting right here. And when the market opens, I can always move this order to wherever I want or wherever I think it's going to come. So use the market orders. And this is also good because then in case if some news comes up and this algo uh, just drops the price like $30 in one minute, you are protected, right? You're not going to lose uh, a whole big chunk just because you were not using the stop price. So always go in with, with wide enough stop price, which you can always adjust with these, uh, these uh, you know, moving uh, prices. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're, uh, if you have Thinkorswim, you can use that. But if you have other platform, look into it, see if it offers that ability for you to be flexible, okay? Uh, so that's how you, that's how I do it. You know, I use bracket orders. So, and then I can always adjust these prices. But again, the way to do it is only buy at a key price level, right? This this buy order needs to be only at the key price level. And this one is pretty good, this 337 one. Why? Because there's an uptrend line, right? And then there's a key price level, right? So that means there's, it's good quality. So if this one gets an execution, yes, I would like definitely take that, but it depends on where the price is opening. Uh, Monday morning, right? Uh, during the day, let's look at uh, Tesla. Okay, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Maybe I lost everybody or something, but uh, okay, I'm back. Let me share my screen again. Uh, where were we? Okay, so we're looking at Tesla, right? So Tesla, again, only going to buy at key price level, uh, not going to buy them at anywhere else. So I'm, again, active scalper. You can see all these prices. Uh, and you have to execute your trade at a key price level, right? 708.8, 704.6, 704.10.2. And you have to know if you're going to play a bounce or a rejection or a breakout. Personally, I don't play breakouts on when I'm scalping. I'm only looking for bounce trades or rejection trades to short the stock uh, based on the uh, uh, little presentation that I gave you. Right, so this is very important. No market orders. Always use bracket orders. Keep it simple. Indicators. Uh, I don't use them. I don't think it really matters when it comes to scalping. If you are, uh, uh, you know, if you want to use an indicator or not, and your platform should be advanced enough. Right, it should let you do all these fancy things that you want to do with it. Okay, so what you need, you need to find your niche. You need to have a consistent methodology or framework to uh, that lets you define your strategy that, hey, I'm, I'm scalping because of such and such reason. You have to know the why behind it, right? You have to uh, have some data backing up that, that yes, I'm good at scalping because I'm doing certain things in a certain way. There's a structure to it, okay? Uh, and the trading platform sh should allow you to give you uh, those, those uh, flexibility that you can have bracket orders, you can move it quickly, 
Uh, you can have one cancels the other order. So that means if you your order gets executed uh, uh, and then subsequently two orders should get in, uh, 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 get submitted as well. One for stop loss and one for the uh, profit order, right? And when you execute one of them, the other one should be canceled automatically. So these things, you know, and a lot of these platforms let you do that these days. So discipline and patience are definitely key things in this whole thing. Remember, technical side, and then there's an emotional side. So develop those skills if you want, right? And we at it, I Trade Price, we publish those price levels on the core stocks that we follow every week, right? If you want to try them, email it, uh, email us or message us, and we'll be happy to share, uh, or, you know, a seven-day trial with you, and then you can take a look at that. And if you like it, if it's working on you, uh, if you, you know, let's say paper trade it for, for seven days based on those key levels, pick two or three names and just stick with those for the week to uh, scalp trade using the strategy, right? With the bracket order, uh, let us know uh, and we'll be happy to do that. And if you want to learn uh, at the same time, if you want to learn how to make these levels, right? Let me show you, uh, included a lot of good stuff in the, in the, in the course here. Uh, Again, this was some of the stuff is old stuff, but then I introduced, uh, okay, you need to know the market direction, the trend lines. There are some exercises uh, with all the setups and everything, expectations and target. How do you define your targets, price channels, uh, how to create price levels, uh, some bonus strategies. A lot of people wanting to uh, trade crypto. So how do you trade crypto? You know, it's a little bit different from stocks because of the liquidity and the prices, the volatility and everything. So if you can have some particular strategy, uh, that's what I wrote in here. And then some other uh, uh, things, important uh, topics around trade execution, scalping itself, and then some non-trading stuff. You know, if you had a bad day, how to bounce back, what sort of mistakes people make, which I made myself in the uh, beginning years. Uh, and then if you're learning, trying to learn price action, you know, what are some of the tips that you can follow? So this is something that you can do on your own as well. But again, there should be a way, right? There should be some methodology, some framework that you follow to uh, execute these trades so that you can define these things. Otherwise, uh, you know, you'll be just kind of throwing a dart and it won't matter what you do because you will not be able to measure your performance that, hey, what is what is it that is working? So now I know this works. So that's why I trust myself. I trust my levels. That was the biggest thing that I struggled with as a trader uh, to, to overcome my fear, right? So I gave myself some time to uh, 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 practice this thing. I gave myself some time to see how it's working out for me. I gave myself some uh, uh, way to measure my performance, right? To, in a way that I can analyze it. I can analyze, okay, the bounces are working better for me than the rejections. So those kind of things, uh, I think you need to look at and come up with to make sure that you have something that is, uh, that is consistent, right? Uh, the idea or the goal for a scalper is, uh, is to keep their profits. And you, the only way you can keep your profits is by being disciplined and by being patient, okay? So you have to make sure that you uh, uh, stick to these rules, right? And you time your entry only at these key price levels, right? Because then you're, on, you're already kind of, uh, you know, going in with a higher accuracy. So if it's not going to work, you will immediately know. You will not sit all day long trying to figure out why is it not working or, or, hey, what should I do? And if it did not work the first time, that's fine. You know, go look for another scalping opportunity, but don't make a revenge trade where you just get in right away because, hey, I want to make that money back. Wait for the right time and patience, right? And these lines, these levels give you that one of your rule is that I'm only going to enter at the key price level. So those kind of things. All right, so hope you guys like this uh, little you know, session on scalping. I'll probably start doing more of these on different topics uh, and we'll have uh, Annie as well in uh, uh, one of these uh, sessions going forward. I think she has her own things that she likes to talk about. Uh, 
So, okay, somebody's raising a hand. I have got a, uh, God, you do that. Uh, let's go and mute. Okay. Shut hey. the fuck up, bitch. You're gay. <laughs> That's such a bad thing. Yeah, it was a joke. Did not like that. All right, guys. Have a good rest of your day. I hope you guys learned something. And if there's something, any questions or anything like that, please reach out. We'll be happy to, uh, 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 you know, uh, talk more about it. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.